Welcome Charlie Kirk and Buck Angel. Thank you for coming. Tonight's topic is going to be transgenderism in America. You guys each have a few minutes to give your opening statements. I'll start with Charlie. Okay, uh, first, thanks for joining. Um, I'm not gonna take the entire time. Um, I think it's pretty simple, my viewpoint. I think there's only two genders and I have sympathy for people uh, that suffer from gender dysphoria um, and compassion, and I think we'll explore that together. Um, and uh, you know, transgenderism, if you will, presupposes that there are two genders, and I look forward to like learning your perspective on all of that. Um, but it's a serious problem, and I think based on things you've said, we'll actually have some common ground on children and education and the entire kind of detransitioning movement that's happening right now, because a lot of people have regret after undergoing that irreversible surgery. Um, but yeah, my position is pretty clear. Um, your chromosomal makeup is very important. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we should be grounded in biological and material reality. Um, and you know, I believe that gender and sex are directly related. And so I know I have more time to use, but I'm gonna allow our guests to use that time up. <laughs> Right on. First off, thanks for having me. I really appreciate debates and I really appreciate these conversations because they will help us move forward. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much on board with a lot what you said there. I do believe in sex. I believe in biological sex. I am a biological female who decided that I felt male and wanted to look male and live in the world as male. And as you see, I pretty much look like a man. You pull it off. But I am not a biological man. So I am a biological female. So that being said, that should also be understood in the sense that I am not trying to change biology. What I'm trying to change here is a perspective that some people don't feel the way they were born to feel. So what I'm trying to say is that yes, biological sex is real and it's, you cannot change that, but what you can change is an appearance to look a certain way to walk the world as a happier person. So I do believe that gender is something that can be performed, where I do not believe that sex is a performative space. Okay. So that leads me to our first question, and you guys kind of answered this a little bit, but are gender and sex two different things? And I'll start with you. So gender and sex are two different things as far as I'm concerned. And why, why I say that is because sex, you cannot change your biological sex. That is not possible to do that. I'm proof of that. If you did my chromosomal test or all that, it will come back as a biological female. What I did change is my gender and the way I look and the way I perform to the world. So I think this tends to be a lot of the problem What what the rest of, I, I would say, the trans activists, who I, I don't really align with trans activism this day, these days, because I will say that I cannot change my biological sex, but I can change the way I look to the world. So the, this is where I think that we're running into a problem and why people don't understand. What I did is a thing to, cha to change and save my life, where I believe today in the new transgender world, we are saying that biolo biology doesn't exist and anyone can be a woman and our man and those things, and that's not true. I do not believe that. So I believe on some level, gender and biological sex can be separated, though I do understand why people like yourself or other people in the world don't understand that those things can be separated and that they are the same so, thing. So you're a splinter against some of the transgender movements yes. that we're seeing. Yes, yes, right? 100% I am. Yeah, so like yes. the idea that men can become pregnant is... Not true, <laughs> and why I will say that is, yes, the kind of man that can become pregnant happens to be a man like me, which again, I'll go back to tell you, is a biological woman. The only people that can get pregnant are biological women. So anything other than that, you're lying. It's right. a total lie. So yeah, yeah, just so I understand how you describe yourself, yes. you're, um, and, I, I, and I'm not trying to be cruel, you're wearing no. a costume, is that? That's right, that's right. Now, now, some trans people will be very offended by that. I am not yeah, offended. I'm not trying to offend no, you. No, I yeah. know you're not. And I, actually, that's, what I, I want, I'm, that's why I'm sitting here, my yeah. friend, because I know that you wanna have the discussion. Right. And maybe you wanna understand me. Doesn't mean that I might change your mind. All I care about is respect. That's all I care right. about. And seeing that I'm trying to participate in the world. Now, what I'm gonna tell you is there are people in the trans community who are not participating in the world. And they're creating lies, and they're creating deceit in order for me a person like myself not to be able to move forward in the world and then people like yourself arguing wait a minute trans people aren't real or I don't know if that's how you feel but I see where you're coming from and you're saying what's happening here why are we why are we denying biology 
that is something I will not be a part of because if I wasn't a biological female, I wouldn't be a trans person. Right. Right? Yeah. So that's refreshing to hear because I kind of feel like I'm living in the land of the insane sometimes, <laughs> right? So do I, which, okay, so now that's a weird space for us Oh, both. yeah. So we're, we're both, we both agree with that. So I guess, you know, and again, with the uh, potential of stepping on landmines here, I might be imprecise with my, my, my language is, is it then the right thing to transition? Right. Mm -hmm. Because the data shows high suicide rates, mm -hmm. regret, mm -hmm. people that say they want to detransition. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not trying to say you made a mistake. That would be, you know, uh, again, kind of harsh of me. But mm -hmm. what I would ask, though, is you look at all this data in front of you. Twenty percent of trans youth attempt suicide in 2020. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you might say it's because of bullying and other factors, but we can explore that. Mm -hmm. um, but is that the right move? Just because you feel something, should you do it? That's right. That's a great question. So again, I can't. I don't speak for a whole community, right? I speak for somebody who transitioned 29 years ago. Okay, I didn't just transition yesterday. I did it in a time when we didn't even have what we have today, right? And I did it in a time where people thought I was a cr creepy weirdo freak. And people tried to shut it down and people would not help me. And somehow I found a way to transition medically, which means that I started taking testosterone. I was the very first person to do that in Los Angeles, take testosterone. And my doctor called me a guinea pig. He actually called me a guinea pig because he didn't know what he was doing and he had no clue, but he was willing to try to help me find this space. And then. I operated on myself, which I removed my breasts so that I had a more male looking uh, physique. And then through that, I just decided that I wanted to look and live male. So, so that being said, I think the problem here is that I'm a different type of trans person. I'm a transsexual person. So tell me the difference. So the difference now today we have transgender, which is an umbrella term for different kinds of people like non-binary, transmasculine, FTM. I mean, there's all these different kinds of queer queer, whatever, There's just, they're making all these, these things up, which is fine. I wanna say that that's, but that does not represent me. And so what happened, I had, a, I had like what I like to call a sex change. Even though that's not possible, it's what we called it. So I wanted to look, I wanna be you, I wanna look and be a man, but I'm not like you, I'm a different kind of man. That was the whole point of me transitioning. Right, so, but I guess the, the moral question is, should you just always do what you want to do? So that going back to that question, no, I do not believe okay. you should always do what you wanna do if it in the long run is going to hurt you rather than help. Now me, it helped me. I'm a successful person in the world. I, was, I attempted suicide, I was a drug addict, I was homeless, I was prostituting, I was doing all of these things to survive as a female, but I couldn't survive that way. And now as a man, I live an amazing, beautiful life. And isn't that what most people want in no, the world? No, sure, I, I, I was, yeah. and you know, with the risk of calling it in an exception, because I think we could explore that further and I think there'd be other issues, is sure. that um, there is a massive question of mm -hmm. When, when do you restrain what you want for yeah. what might be good? That's right. right. And yes. so let me just ask you a question. I'm just curious. You were at a point where I could not survive as a female yes. in a female costume. Is that, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, that's exactly right. That there, yes. there was nothing at your disposal? So, nothing. So I would challenge that okay. um, from a spiritual and also pragmatic way, again, mm -hmm. with the risk of not actually living through that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I refuse to accept the premise the only way that one could deal with it is through sure. castration. Sure, I, I can understand how you would think that because you don't live it. No, right? no, for sure, and I, I so, get, that's so, why so I said that, the risk of stepping on that. And landmine. again, I don't think every trans person is the same. They're not, and I'm going to go back to what you said earlier: detransitioning. Okay, yes, which is a big movement. Oh my God! I, as a transsexual man, it makes me sick to my stomach to see this. I never thought of that ever. The minute I transitioned, I never looked back and my life only got better. So I start to look at why are young, these are all young women mostly, right? Okay. So young girls, biological, women, biological right? women who have decided to do what I did, right? Which is to take testosterone, masculinize themselves, have top surgery. And then within sometimes six months to a year are like, uh oh, I made a mistake. I'm going to tell you exactly why that's happening. We have not put mental health care in the equation to transition. So what we have is called self ID. You could today say, I'm a trans, I'm a woman and I want to transition. You don't have to go to any therapy. You don't have to see a doctor. You can go on the internet and get your hormones and you can happily be on your way. So, but let me ask you, I mean, as someone who's an outspoken member, and I know you say you're not part of the community, but of this decision, yeah. I mean, don't you think that you have normalized this? Yes, on some, yes, I have for a reason, because there are people like me. Don't, don't think that there are not people what like me. What percentage do you think that is? A very small percentage. This that are is like a, you? That are like me, a very, oh, okay. that's, why I'm, that's why I'm sitting here talking no, I'm, about I'm hearing your nuance. Because I, I don't think there's as many as we have today, and that's why we have such a huge population of 
detransitioners. I saw a group of 25,000. correct, yes. 25,000. So, so does it concern you, though, that, that your advocacy over the last couple of years, do you, I mean, I guess, do you have any regret? You're like, yes. maybe I lured people into this where they didn't really know what they were signing up for. Thank you for saying that. And I, I, I really live with that, you know, because I think to myself, did I do something to create the space that we're in now? And then I have to say, no, I did not. If people took my words out of context, that's, that's not no, my I, space. I, and you know what? I think that's very fair. You can't, you can't hold just an advocate accountable for everything. Thing. Because they I try really to do that to me all the time. Yeah, I of that, course, yeah. and I truly try to live my life very authentically, if that makes sense. Yeah. Where I say, "Look, this is who I am. This has saved my life. I'm a, I'm a, 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 for lack of a better word, normal person on some level." So what you're saying is that before the actual like action of surgery happens, which is very yeah. um, serious, yes. irreversible, yes. you would say you first have to check a lot of boxes of therapy and all this. It's, yes. It shouldn't be easy, on demand, or immediate. No, it should not, my friend. And that is one of the reasons, probably the number one reason, we have so many people who are saying, uh-oh, I made a mistake. Mental, look, I have a mental disorder. I don't care what anybody says. I have an actual mental disorder called gender dysphoria. And when you take gender dysphoria off the table, which the trans community has done now and says, yeah. you don't need dysphoria to be trans, wait a minute. So you don't need cancer to have cancer? Right. Like, what are we doing? But let, let me ask you one last thing. And so it's just a thought exercise, which is, is the surge, and for you it was, but generally, should it become something that is so exceedingly rare? For example, just because you want something, isn't, it isn't always right. So, That's right. like a someone who has anorexia, mm -hmm. you wouldn't give them liposuction. <laughs> I hope not. But right. They would be demanding it. That, right? That's right. That's right. They go to their doctor. I that, feel fat. Yes. And so sometimes your yes. mind can actually be misleading. That's right. What would be right for your body? That's right. That's okay. mental health right there. So why are we not going to the pinpointing the problem, okay, or, or the, the situation of trans is mental health. No, I think that's right. And if we are not dealing with it as a mental health problem and we're just saying, you know who you are, that's what's gonna cause the problem right there. I'm just curious, do you think that if, when you were just a, bio, just a biological female, yeah. not, you know, kind yeah. of showing yourself as a male, yeah. do you yeah. think that if you had therapy and counseling, do you think that would have been p potentially helpful before surgery or do you think not so not Well, not so you know, again, I, I, I'm 59 years old, right? So I- The world I, was different. Uh, different. Then, right? In yeah. the 70s, I, I grew up in the 60s and 70s and I was a, whole, I was a really very um, sad child. I really wanted to be a boy since I was a little kid. My parents raised me as Buck. I was totally, I was tomboy, right? They called it a tomboy, right? So, so that being said, no one knew I was a trans kid and I don't even think there are trans kids. Speaking of kids. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you told you don't want to cross it. So. Let's move on to the next question. Do you think schools should teach children about the option to transition to a different sex? Why do you think this is being heavily pushed by some school districts across America? <sighs> It is really upsetting to me to see stuff like that happen in the school system. Now, again, what, what age group are we talking about? Elementary school, middle school? Elementary school. Okay, no, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna say no right there. Elementary school, no. We, we should not be teaching kids about these things in a system where they're already just kind of growing up and learning things, right? And they need to stay focused. Yeah, kids are gonna say they're trans or they're gonna say, I feel like a boy or I feel like a girl or I feel like an elephant or that's very normal behavior for a child. But to all of a sudden say when a child says they're a girl or a boy, to immediately pinpoint it as trans with no mental health care or no system, because there's no system to put them through right now they immediately want to put them on puberty blockers that's right so as a person who doesn't believe every child says exactly what that child is feeling or knows I disagree with that 100% because what you're doing is medicalizing a child from the age of eight years old which means that child will be medicalized for the rest of their life so I'm, I'm just curious which is you know you've been an advocate in or an, an, just mm -hmm. an outspoken person this, yes. in this um, space is that it seems that your position on this is a vast minority position. Yes. Why, why do you think that is? Oh, it's difficult. I think because I'm older, and I think because I'm a little more grounded about who and what I am, and I think I went through a lot to get where I'm at. And like I said, there are most definitely young people who feel like I do. I don't doubt that in any way, shape, or form. But I think the equation doesn't equal to what I did, which is which has saved my life, is to give, I'm gonna keep going back to the same thing, yeah. mental health care. Right. You cannot just take something at face value. Now, adults are doing it all the time. I'm, I'm trans, and I'm gonna transition, and I'm gonna do, I don't know if we can argue that with an adult. An adult can make their own choice, yeah, right? No, I, I think that's, I yeah, think that's right. But, I, I do think but that But if, if you have a 14-year-old that has irreversible surgery. And it is irreversible, by the way. 
So there's an argument that says this, the, an argument that says puberty blockers are irreversible. That's not true. That they are reversible or irreversible? They are irreversible. Yeah, I, I agree, totally, Because yes. the re, the, you're blocking puberty. Every person in the world has puberty, not just trans people. Mm -hmm. So once you start blocking puberty, what happens there? The your development, yeah, okay. Your development. I think we're gonna probably have the same points on many things here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, look, you self-identified that it, it is a mental issue. I, I, I get, I'll be very honest, attacked mercilessly by people by saying that gender dysphoria is even a thing. Right? Okay, that's fine. Sure. And so, but sure. you, you openly admit that. Um, that's I right. guess here's a, here's a, just a, a general question: Is that the trans population is exploding with young people? I know. Does, does that concern you? Yes, it does. Well, and so, that so, so, so that, that of course we do. Because look, I don't care if a kid wants to say they're black, blue, green, an L. I don't care. What I care about is medical transition. Okay. And so what I mean by that is, the kid wants to ID as a trans person and go through school wearing boy clothes and dressing like a boy. Go right, do it, my friend, because you'll probably grow out of it later <laughs> on. But when a kid starts going and getting what we call top surgery at 20 years old and starts putting hormones in their body, every piece of that equation is ear. Reversible. I, I'm. Let's say today I decide that I want to go back to living as a woman. Too late. I'm going to be an ugly woman first off. Secondly, what am I going to do with my breasts? I'm going to have to go get breast uh, implants. I'm going to have to go through a whole psychological space. I don't even think I would make it, to be honest with you. So that's what people need to see, and that's why I appreciate you having the conversation with me. Yeah. Because just because I'm trans doesn't mean I agree with everything that's going on in the right. community. Right. So, like for example, if I if if you were a typical trans activist, which you're not, I would ask the question, what is a man? That's right. And the answer would be whatever I want it to be, <laughs> right? Right, of and, and your answer is actually, well, <laughs> no, it's X, Y chromosomes. That's right. And, and, and all that. So, That's right. Um, yeah, so I guess, let me ask you a question. Why is it that so many trans youth try to commit suicide? Well, okay, a lot of people try to commit suicide. So if you're just going to- It is disproportionate, though. On, well, I don't know. In the LGBT community, I can tell you, gay people try to kill themselves at a high level. Lesbian people try to kill themselves at a high level. Bisexual people do the same thing. I don't know if the trans community is actually bigger than the rest of the LGBT community. So I'm gonna say that I disagree with that on some level because again, statistics. Well, where are you getting the statistics from, right? I can show you statistics that probably are different than your statistics. So well, yeah, to be honest, they're actually from transgender advocacy groups. Well, there you go. It's coming from the actual group. What about Group, what about a group that doesn't have anything to do with the transgender community? Why don't they do that study? So, so are you implying that the transgender groups have a vested profit interest to make it seem like it's a bigger problem than it is? On some level, yes, I am, okay, 100%. I, and I, I don't, mean, I'm, and I'm I don't all dis for being cynical. And, I, <laughs> and I don't disagree. I was suicidal. I tried to commit suicide two times. I was put in a mental I'm hospital. You yeah. Thank you, my friend. But I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. 100% it exists. But what I'm also trying to say is just because a kid says they're suicidal does not necessarily mean transgender positioning them will stop the suicide attempts. We no, no, that, that's exactly right. Yes. And so so that, that's where I think the other side, whatever side that is, and it's like all this, or the advocates are saying, hold on, if the surgery happens, all the problems will go away. But that's not true. I can show you that through detransitioners. Read every detransitioner story. I cry. I actually I know, cry I when I, I read those things. Of them, yeah. I'm like, how are we letting this happen? It's why I'm sitting in this seat today, yeah. because I don't want to see that happen. It saved my life, my friend. I'm here living a m the most amazing life I've ever lived. That's what I want the world to see. But I did it because I went through a program. I went through a system. Right. I didn't just say I'm trans and I got surgery and I moved on. Well, and look, I'm not one to say you're wrong with that, by the way. Like, if someone, if I had a guest here and they said, you know, Charlie, I just I decided to only eat carrots and it saved my life. Like, yeah. okay, then yeah. you know, you, you know what's best right. for you, right? right? I suppose what we're talking about is societal mm -hmm. prescriptions and public policy prescriptions. Yes. So you would say, like for example, the law that's being proposed in California mm -hmm. that allows sexual reassignment surgery, no parental consent, taxpayer funded, big mistake. Big mistake. Big mistake. Not, not, and it's not the money, okay? Again, it's not the money for me. It's more the fact that they're not listening to people like myself who are older, more grounded, understand what's happening. Even, even there are actual trans doctors who are disagreeing with this. But our voices are so low in, in this space that we don't get heard because then I think, well, what is everybody getting out of this? Why do they want so many people to well, transition? So, you know, you know, the answer is the pharmaceutical companies make a ton of money on this. Of course, it that, always that comes back to the money. Pfizer and pharmaceutical companies make a ton of money on hormones. 
bottom. You know, I read in Market Watch, which is what a, a, yeah. a website for for, for stock, right? It actually says in there, invest in trans surgery. It's going to be a five That's billion. Right. Unbelievable to me. I'm like, oh, hold up, people. Wait a minute here. I am not a commodity, and I am not that that space. That is disgust. We are literally zero zero point five percent of the population. Really, think about that. <laughs> Trans people are so small. How are we so powerful in the conversation right now? And how are we saying there are so many trans people? How are we doing this? And why are what's the agenda attached to that? So, do you think that do you think more people are then becoming kind of captured into the transgender mm. lifestyle uh, because there is a campaign to recruit them or to persuade them they actually might be transgender? So both. I think on some level, social media plays a huge, huge part. Go just go to TikTok and you can watch youngsters. You, these are young kids, like 14, 15 years old, having surgeries and dancing around, showing it off. We never did that. when I, when, when, Where I came from, you, you, you hit it on some level. And you just wanted to- Do you think to, that's better to hide it? Yeah, on some level, it, because I just want to be a man. I don't want to be, I'm not a trans person, I'm a like man. Like you're not trying to just be an activist to persuade more people to No, I, I want to, it's again, I always going to go back to the same thing. It saved my life. I want to be a man and I want to walk the world as a man. That's a transsexual person. I want to be part of what you're doing, you know, even though I'll never be you. Are there inherent advantages to being a man? Are there inherent advantages to being a woman? And Charlie, I'll let you start. Um, well, I mean, I, I, I think that there's female privilege right now in America, and I've said that for a while. Um, men are more likely to die at work, more likely to die of drug overdoses, more likely to go to war uh, and die for the country, more likely to commit suicide, more likely to be homeless. Um, women comprise most college graduates, most mm -hmm. master's degrees, most doctorate degrees. Women are less likely to go bankrupt. They're less likely to die mm -hmm. in car accidents. Um, they're less likely to do all these sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. um, and we are seeing an emasculation of the American male. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there are, there are advantages depending on you know, what your particular skill set, whatever your passion might be. For example, mm -hmm. it is just biologically easier to be a laborer mm -hmm. as a man than it is a female. Um, and women are also wired to be nurturers and teachers more so than um, bricklayers or, mm -hmm. you know, Marines. Right, right. Well, that's true, and I think what you're, what you're, but that being said, I lived half my life as a woman. <laughs> so I have actual experience of living in the world as a woman. And I can say now as a man, holy moly, <laughs> my life has changed. I get so many different things. I can walk through the door and have a lot more, you're not gonna experience that because you were really born into that. You walk into it and you don't ever even so, see so, that. So off. give me an example. Of so what I'll give you an be. example. Let's talk about dinner and we're going out to dinner and okay. I, I'm always getting the check now. <laughs> I never got the check before. Wait, you had to they, pay. I have to pay as well, a man. That, that means but it's that, harder to be a man. It, on some level, so it's it more is, expensive. It's more expensive to be a man. There are different. There are different ups and downs so of that. So where's the advantage so, to so that? So the advantage. Well, the advantage for me is that people see me as a man. So for it's important that so you they understand. they expect you to pay for they it. They expect me to pay for it. So I pass. How is that privilege? For me, that's privilege. It means that they see me as a man. Well, okay, I mean you that's. See, you see that that's a big deal for me. Now going back to the statistics of being male and female. So I think that men, it's easier on some level to walk through the world as a man than it is to walk through the world as a woman. I mean, I, I can just say for me, it, it's just easier for me, and I see more advantage and more privilege that I get to just be this male and not be questioned on certain situations. Whereas a woman. I would be pushed to the side, or I wouldn't get to have the conversation. I don't or, think that's right. Well, I mean, that's okay. You do, you don't have to, and you won't have that same experience that I have. No, that's definitely true. I'll yeah, never have you, that. You'll same never experience. have that experience. But, but the, the, does the data compel you based on income levels, graduation, you know, suicide? Well, I think women are are definitely being, being they're doing better. A hundred percent. There's no doubt about that. We can't argue. Why do that. you think that is? Well, I think because women are, are speaking up for themselves. I think women are speaking up and saying, wait a minute here, we're part of the population. We should be able to do these kinds of things. And women, I think, before didn't get the opportunity to speak up for themselves, where I think now they get to speak up for themselves and men are respecting that. I yeah, do I mean, think look, men sex, respect Sexism it. goes both ways, right? Of I mean, course. you could be sex against a woman, but I mean, you look at Family Guy or The Simpsons, what's the archetype when you think of a regular suburban man? Well, right. That, Overweight, that, that's dumb, right. clumsy, that's right. unable to get their thoughts together, that's right? right? Sitting at home and drinking beer. But that's not true. No, it's not true, but yeah. that's the, what's the caricature of most women on television? Career-oriented, boss uh -huh. babe, okay. private investigator, Queen yeah. Latifah, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you kind of like, you balance yeah. those two things, yeah. 
and, and that plays out in certain ways, which I think is, you know, the emasculation, the emasculation of the American male. Well, you know, on some level, there is that, and and because I'm, I, you know, when I when I transitioned, I wanted to be very hyper masculine, right? I really went for that masculinity. I really wanted people to see me as the, why? Why was I so obsessed with being this very masculine sort of space? Which I do agree on some level. We are being attacked as masculine men. I get attacked all the time from the trans community. You're heteronormative. I don't even know what that means, heteronormative, or I'm, you know, I guess that I'm playing into this role playing of being a man. But to me that's not role playing to me it's what I feel the most comfortable being and how I want to walk the world but I do think masculinity is under attack on some level as a bad thing and so I don't think masculinity is a bad thing at all I so think let me ask you when you identified as a woman uh -huh. um, and I would argue you've never stopped being a woman but that's again, that's okay not trying yep. to offend you by yep. saying that um, was w when you were trying when you were feminine were you just unhappy Oh God, I was, you know, and I was very much a very butch woman, right? And I, and I identified as a gay woman and I was an athlete, you know, that very stereotypical athletic, butchy girl. So I was very unhappy. And because as a child, my parents really did raise me as a boy. They re very much were okay with me being a tomboy because pretty much everyone thinks you're gonna grow out of it, right? And eventually you'll just be a girl. And so I tried to be a girl. I was a fashion model. I traveled the world as a, as a female fashion model. I did all, it just, something in my gut just was not there and I did not feel comfortable when people would say oh you're so beautiful or wow what a great woman you are I just was like Ugh. it just it just rubbed me the wrong way it, it's hard to explain to somebody who doesn't really experience that dysphoric space do you think so let, let's say that next person exists yeah. now right yeah. yeah and do you think that there is the breakthroughs through therapy or psychological yes. that might have prevented you from having to go through like do you think there might have been some repressed childhood Oh, issues that could have been possibly, addressed possibly, I versus would've... a surgical issue. Possibly, but you know, I didn't. I didn't do my surgery until my, my early late twenties, early thirties. So it wasn't that I was just going into it. I did a, ten years of and therapy. And the world was a lot different. A lot. I did ten years of therapy. So you would go to therapists, and like, I'm not trying to pry into your private life. No, you, you would can. say, like, look, I actually, I think I'm a man. Yes. I want to be a man. Yes. And every therapist would say, no, you're not. You're a very masculine woman, every single one, until I finally found a therapist who, who was br brand new, and I said to her, I sat in that office for five, di for five times. I would go there so like scared to say it because I knew they were gonna shut me down. Finally, when I said, you know, I feel like a man, and it was like magic, she said to me, I know. And then that, she's the one who basically helped me try to figure out how can I live in the world as a man 29 years ago. So I do think on some level, people like me are real. We are, look at me. But I also think on some level, there is something today that's happening to push too many people into this space that should not be pushed into this space. What are your thoughts on pornography? Does, por does porn desensitize? Mm. Should it be banned altogether? Mm. Do you believe it has a negative effect on relationships? Is there such a thing as a positive effect to be had by porn consumption in society? And I'm gonna let Charlie start with this one. Um, yeah, porn is awful. I mean, it's a poison, it's arsenic, it's a cancer on society. Um, I do want to give you an opportunity to introduce your background in that, sure. if that's okay, before yes. I go any further. So yes, I started my career <laughs> in the pornography business. So I was the very first transsexual man to- Are, are you still active in that industry? I produce products now. I don't produce pornography. I produce uh, toys, what we call sex toys, or products that help people kind of connect you, to their bodies. Do you have any regret of your time in, no, in the pornography not at industry? All. No, not at all. Not at all. And so I think here's where we're gonna probably have different opinions about that space. I personally, I make adult entertainment. So this, this is where, this is the problem. So in the world now we have what's called the internet, <laughs> which screwed up everything, not only pornography, but it gives a access where access should not be. And so now kids have access to pornography. And so as an adult, I think as an adult, I should be able to make whatever I make and I should be able to make it for you or whoever wants to watch it. As adults, we're consenting. It's totally, if you don't wanna watch it, don't watch it. If you do, you have the opportunity to do that. Now, for me, the problem is kids. And the problem is the youth looking at these things as sex education or as a means and a way to sort of understand how to do things. And I don't agree with that. And I do not think pornography should be accessible to youngsters at all at all. Do you think it's a moral problem? Uh, moral, I'm, I don't think so. What I think is that it's a problem to do with 
money. Again, it comes back to money. So it, it, the more money these places make, they don't have any more morals and they don't have any more, more space because they're just wanting to make money. And, I, and that's really what pornography is about. Pornography is about making money. That's all it is. I'm in that industry. I understand it. It's all about the dollar. Nothing else. But you know what you just said is not realistic. 14 and 15 year olds are accessing whatever content you publish. That's what I'm saying and I don't think that's okay. I do not think that's okay and I talk to my industry all the time about how can we build a space where children, because 14 and 15 are children, should not be accessing But this. like let's say even 19 year olds. That's still to me a child on some level, but 21. it's not. They're, they're an adult, they're an adult. They can make their own choices. Look, and I'm gonna, but I'm gonna be very honest, like, with someone who's actually struggled with watching pornography uh -huh, before, sure. mm -hmm. like the fact you worked in the pornography industry, yes. I, I look at you as like a sexual drug dealer. That's okay. Yeah, I like, understand that. You're producing content that will kill people. Well, I don't, I don't agree depression, with that. Depression, isolation. But they probably already had depression and isolation prior to the pornography. Well, look, I, I could, I'm going to say this as like from a personal perspective, it destroys lives. It does. Well, yeah, so do a lot of things. So does alcohol, so do, so, so do cigarettes. But this is a very Those particular, are legal. let's just focus on this, right? So, but you go into it knowing that the people that would be consuming it uh -huh. will be less likely to be faithful to their wives. That's not true. That is not true oh, at all. Absolutely is true. The, the, the stats around pornography are unbelievable. But I can show you stats that show that's not true, number one. Number two, those people already have that inside of them. So I know many people who consume porn who have no issues at all and are perfectly no okay No issues that you it. know, but let, this goes back to well, should you do what you feel is right? And the answer is no. If you're an adult, I think you should be able to make choices that really reflect to your own space. Right? So that's why I said transitioning. If you're an adult who's transitioning, I'm gonna tell you, you should slow down a little bit and you should take your time. But as an adult, that's all I can say to you as an adult. So, so you think if an adult is addicted to pornography, mm -hmm. no problem? Well, addiction again. So that word addiction really is very powerful and it can mean a lot of things. What is it? Addiction means you're going on there 24 seven and you're looking at it and you can't get once off of it. Once a day. And, and once a day, twice a day, 500. So, so that being said, how many people within that space and is it men, is it women? Both. When you shoot the film, you yes. know it could ruin a 16 year old's life. Well, I don't It's think like when you actually, create a fentanyl pill, you know it could kill somebody. Well, that's, that is a whole other argument. That being said, no, I don't think that when I make pornography. I've had so many people tell me, thank you. So, so wait, hold on. Yeah. What good does making pornography do? Like what, what okay. societal good? Yeah, that's a good? great question. So for myself, I can only speak about my own work. For myself, what I did is I created a space where to celebrate my body sexually. I was not sexually connected to my body, which is hurtful for me. And I could not have relationships. I could not do any of that. The pornography actually helped me connect to my body, make me feel very uh, handsome or beautiful in my body and felt needed in my body. I have lots of trans people and outside of the trans community tell me, thank you for your work. It really yeah, so, but validated you understand, me. We quickly went from you had to have surgery to survive to yes. now you had to have sex on camera to survive. Yes. No, it wasn't for survival. You said happiness, self-discovery. I didn't say survival. I so, said, no, it made me feel better about myself and it made other people feel better about themselves. So the thing is this, you have the opportunity to watch porn or not watch porn. That's how I look at it. it, it, it Sort of, yes, of course. But when you're 17 and you get addicted to something from an industry that, Again, that is under predatory age, towards right. you, or 18 or 19 right. or 20, right. or married couples that get targeted with these things. Yes. And I get the thousands of emails from our listeners of young men that are struggling with these things. They struggle, I and know. And millions, but they it's struggle. the industry. It's the industry that normalizes it. And, and the numbers are unbelievable. Well, right? that, that's, the, but why? But why? Because we've so, normalized pornography because people produce the films. Not only that, but there's something innate inside of us that wants to see sexual images. Right, that's, that's, that's a point. real I thing. I agree, we shouldn't yeah. do everything we want to do. <laughs> okay, right, that was good. <laughs> I'll give you that one. <laughs> right, so, so, so do you know what we call civilization? restraining ourselves from doing the things we always want to do. Okay, that's fair. That's but at what the, civilization But at is. the same time, pornography makes some people happy. Now, it doesn't they make everyone it happy. Makes them happy. No, I'm gonna it disagree with you. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. Are heroin addicts happy? Yeah, I know some heroin addicts who are totally happy, 100%. Yes, I do. They totally know what they do. They use the drug. They're totally functioning. They move forward. I don't agree with it, but they do it. They love it. They're totally you into it. You think the vast majority of heroin addicts are Not happy. the vast majority. Okay, so that that was, that's good. Now we're talking right. vast majority of heroin addicts. Not are happy. totally slung heroin out on the street. Horrible. Horrible. Heroin and pornography attack the brain exactly the same. 
Same mm. dopamine manipulation. Well, yeah, okay. Same, same fake rushes of endorphins. Uh -huh. Endorphins. So S it is same sort of rush to have to find something more extreme. So does fitness. Fitness does the same thing. So yeah, if you want to the gym every day, yeah, and like, the you difference need is you get healthier. And that's not necessarily true. Body. No, you know, uh uh, that's so wait, not true at so all. So you're making an argument that going to the gym no, I'm no, could I'm be as harmful as. No, because heroin. you asked me heroin, then pornography, and now I'm using fitness as a dopamine. When something is giving you that dopamine rush, you can't that, that, stop. That's a healthy dopamine rush. No, you know because that. then you start using steroids, and then you start trying to make yourself that okay, much so bigger. Let, let, let's, let's talk in world reality. Yeah. Do you really think America has a fitness addiction problem? Oh, my God, of course they do. You think we have a bigger fitness addiction problem? No, not bigger. That's not what it's I said. It's not even in the same universe. It is a definite problem. I think oh, people do no, become... Okay. It's not even close. But that being said, I disagree with you on the we pornography. We have an obesity problem in our country. <laughs> we don't have a cross. Doesn't mean those people problem. aren't going to the gym. Okay, again. So, <laughs> but I'm asking you, so the argument you're making, pornography can make people happy in the moment, of therefore course. moral good. Well, well, the mor my morals and your morals could be different. Morals aren't just mor They're everyone's objective. morals. They're objective. No, of course they are. Yeah, that's, that's, no, we no, have no, different see, morals. No, no, no. Hold up. No, we don't. Well, I'll prove it to you. Want, want okay. me to prove it to you? Okay, sure. You don't think kids should watch pornography. No, I don't think kids Why? should. Why? Because I don't think it's for children. Why? Because I think that children need to learn about sex through a way that is- Why protect children? They're humans. Well, because children need guidance. Why do you say that? Where do you get it from? Because I'm a parent. There you go. That's, That's where right. your morality comes That's from. That's right. Material reality. But it doesn't mean that we have the same morals on everything no, else. No, the point is this, is that we actually accept very similar types of moral premises. Of course premises. we do. Yes. yes. Objective truth. Yes. And guess what? Showing people having sexual intercourse is really bad for people in society. It just is. Well, that's it, because you had a bad experience, but well, I not didn't. Not just me, but but I don't have a bad experience with it. Eighty-two percent of young men are addicted to pornography. But why is it form. men and not women? Well, but there's a fair amount of women as well. But nowhere near but, the amount well, of, to, of. If I have to dive into it, men have higher testosterone. They right? look at right? sexual engagement and men are actually visual and physical. But ways. also, men are actually okay with watching porn or having sex because we're taught as men. Men are taught to be much more promiscuous, much more open around sex. Women are not taught that. Women are taught. Not to talk about sex, women are taught not to masturbate, women are taught all the things that you as a man are taught, that it's okay to be sexual, that it's okay to do these things. So that's why I think porn is more pinpointed towards men than it is to women. They make porn you, for so men. Let me ask you, you don't think men are biologically more predisposed to want to see visual stimulation versus women? Oh, I think that's testosterone for sure, because no, mine it, changed. It's biology. Well, no, it's also testosterone, because mine did change through testosterone. The yes. way I look at things, the way I women feel. Women are not stimulated as much by No, physical. I agree with that. that that's pornography. But, but also women physical. are also not, not actually told that it's okay to watch these kinds of things. They women aren't. watching porn is on the increase tremendously. That's because they're um, making more porn for women. Which is destructive to society. In more in ways. Let me, let, me, let me read some of these numbers, okay? okay? So depression and suicide, yeah. okay? 17% of sex addicts attempt suicide at some point in their life. Okay. Okay, 17%. Depression ratios when respondents began watching porn mm -hmm. was in the single digits. It triples after they start watching porn. Mm -hmm. A 2000, porn, 2017 experiment showed that 14% of male students who watch porn more than three times a week reported depression. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, 2.8% of students who watch porn less than once a week experience depression. Yep. That's a, that's a yep. multiple chasm, yep. huge. Yep. And let me tell you why. We know this in the biochemical literature. Okay. Neurologically, when you start to all of a sudden addict yourself to a fake endorphin rush, yep. which because pornography is so graphic, it's so real, yep. all of a, you're gonna want more. It's the same as a heroin addict. Yep. Do you know the problem though? Is with porn, it's so abundant that you can go deeper and deeper and deeper. And That's next true. thing you know, it takes three hours for you to just get a little bit of stimulation. That's true. Which creates worse, worse marriages, weaker families. And, and you say you're a parent. I mean, I don't know how old your kid is, but Nine. I can't imagine you would want the kid. My kid doesn't know anything about that. And I would never let my kid know. That's what I said to you. There are boundaries around children for but me. But even when they're an adult, you don't think it would do damage to them? No, I don't actually, because I have a healthy attitude towards it, I think. I have a different attitude than, than other people do. And I do think it's healthy to talk about sex. And I do think it's healthy on some level not to get addicted to porn, but to even see the pornography. I don't think that's a bad thing. The addiction is the bad thing. So you don't think sex should be sacred and private between two? Not necessarily, sh sh not necessarily so. I think that people as adults can make their own choices. No, 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 no. that's not the point. That's yeah. a different question. Yeah. In the ideal, should sex be sacred and private? No, I don't think so. Why? Because I think that it's a fun thing, and I think that you oh, can... Oh, it's fun. So we should do... Sex is great. We should great. do fun things. No, yes. uh, trust me, I'm married. I got that. Sex But is the point is that we should do what's fun? Well, we should do what makes us happy. Should we? 
Of course, when or it comes to sex. should we do what's right? Well, what's right to you is going to be different than what's Wrong. right for me. The question, no, so, so why that's do we have not... speed zones outside schools? <laughs> well, look, we're talking about no, porn and you know, sex. No, no, let me tell you why. No. Because we want to protect kids. What we're talking about sex right now. We're speed talking limit. about speed limits. No, 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 this is important because there's only one truth. There's not my truth or your truth. There's Whose truth, truth is it? It's the truth of the laws of nature and nature's God, of no. the natural law. For example, force equals mass times acceleration, right? And? An object at rest will stay at rest. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So there's a certain hard wiring to the universe. You can't escape it. It's part of being but sex on is natural. team reality. Sex is a natural space. And, and, and it is actually something people enjoy doing. As two people yes, coming together, it is not just about in, procreation. In the ideal, that sexual engagement should be protected and conserved and should be sacred. So let me ask you a question. Things that are beautiful, should we make them everywhere always and dilute it or protect it for when it's most sacred? That's just a general well, moral question. Well, that just depends on what it is you're talking about. I don't think ever, you can say that as a blanket statement. Of course you can. Well, I don't think so. I disagree with that. So, so for example, right? So if sex is everywhere, doesn't it start to lose its meaning? No, I don't think that's true at all. You don't think so? I think everyone goes into sex with a different attitude and a different way of being. I don't believe everyone goes with, into sex as it's for this, 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 or this. And I think the same with masturbation. People masturbate for different kinds of reasons. People have sexual encounters for different kinds. People cheat on their wives, you know, cheat so on their for me, different use, reasons. Use that word cheat. Is there something wrong with being unfaithful to your spouse? If it is not within the system of you and your spouse. So if you and your spouse say, we have an open relationship and I can go and have sex with whoever I want, that's between you and your partner. Right, but and I'm talking about just generally morally. No, cheating, I don't, I don't believe in that because you're lying to your partner no. and I don't believe in lying and deceit. Do you think pornography makes cheating more abundant or less abundant? No, I think that, again, it depends on the person, and it depends on the person going at the porn. I don't think you can blame porn for all the problems not, in the world. I'm saying that, but I'm saying that porn yes, is it a does drug to some people. To tens of millions, the vast not majority me, of consumers. But not to me. It does not hold me that way. It does not c control the way I think. It well, does it, not look at... I'll be I'm, honest, you're a, it's your livelihood, though. Well, I mean, not anymore, but it was, but you yes. Made, you made money off yeah, of it. Yeah, I did make money off it. It's a so business. It's an actual business. It defined you. On some level, it did. Yeah, that's how I started my career, right. for sure. Okay, so for the, sure. but the predation of potential people that are innocent. So you know making those films that someone who is innocent could lose that innocence in that moment. But what is innocence? That's a good question. What is it? You know what yeah. innocence is? No. Your nine-year-old not knowing what porn is. That's what innocence is. Well, that's true. So that's why I don't make pornography for nine-year-olds. It doesn't matter. You know it still seeps down to them. No, it does not. Yes, it that's does. not true. That. Well, you, you, well, maybe not nine-year-olds, 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds. And whose fault is that? Is that actually my fault? It's, it, it's the government's fault. It's a lot of fault. Fa it's a lot. It's the and system. If, if a magic wand was waved mm -hmm. and all of a sudden all the pornography production was outlawed, you would have a lot harder time as a 14-year-old Oh, but the problem with outlawing pornography is what happens? It goes underground. And it's harder to find. Oh, it is not harder to find. It is, that is actually not true. So Look at drugs. You can actually go on the internet and buy drugs. Heroin, cocaine, for MDA, all of it. You can actually get it, even though those are illegal. Drug rates have gone up the more decriminalization has yeah. happened in San Francisco. That's, I, okay, I believe we'll in decriminalization. Do you believe the government should ban porn? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, it's, the, soci <laughs> the society's falling apart. Children are being preyed on every day. Um, it should, I mean, a middle ground should be behind age authenticated, password protected, yeah. credit card cre yeah. authorized, 25 years or older, yeah. extremely hard to find ways to get to it. Yeah. But that's not realistic. It's not going to pass anytime soon. No. Um, but it's just, a, it's just a broader moral question of something that is so graphic, that is so predatory, mm -hmm. and quite honestly so harmful yeah. to humanity. If, we, if we're not, as a society, willing to use our collective power to try and stop that, then I think it explains a lot of our other societal ills. Well, yeah, I think everything is about money now. So, you know, of course, if it's making money, the government is not going to get involved and stop it. It's the same that's happening with trans stuff. It's making money. They're not going to stop it. Money is what runs this country I and mean, pretty much the world. So if you look at things, what, what's going to make money, people are not going to stop it. Now, I definitely have a space where I'm telling you I don't believe that pornography 
fees should be ex so accessible. This is a problem I have as a person in that industry. It's too accessible. And so we, as a community in my business, need to understand that. And we need to step up and be much more responsible for the way we are putting that out there. So on some level, I'm a conservative <laughs> pornographer where I do believe it's too accessible on many levels. And how do we stop it from being so accessible? There are people out there who don't care, who just go in the back room and make all kinds of nonsense and put it out on the internet. So that, I have to fight against those kinds of things. So I'm like in a really, really weird space where I do believe in pornography as a positive space, but at the same time, there are bad people in my, in my business who are doing things that are hurting people and are not positive. So, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a weird, I mean, it's the same way I feel about the trans world. I'm in a very weird space there where I do believe there are yeah, real I'll, trans people. I'll be very people. honest though. It's like saying, you know, I'm going to keep on bringing heroin across the southern border, but I only want people that need it. Yeah, use maybe it. you, you could look at it that way. You know way. that all of a sudden a 14 year old who broke his back is going to use the heroin and to try as a pain supplement. And possible, yeah, possible. Yeah, possible. I mean, and so totally. it, it's, it's- That's what I'm saying, I'm in a very weird space because no, as a person, I do believe pornography can be positive. I also believe it can be negative. I, I, I'm, I'm still, so you're gonna have to build out that argument. I've <laughs> well, I don't how, know if we'll ever get there to be honest How can the you. filming of something that is so sacred and special and the widespread of it somehow not do damage to the brain of the recipient? Well, the people I know who use, watch my pornography don't feel that way, so I don't really know how to answer that. The pornography you're watching and the things that you are talking watch. about are not the Thankfully, same. Thankfully, that's, and, and I could say, and that, that's people that great. have healed from that. That's right. Ha, and I'll, I'll be very honest, I have a very hard time, and you're, you're a nice person and all this, I have a very hard time being okay mm -hmm. with people in the quote unquote industry. Sure. That no, have, no, I understand that. That have done that kind of damage. And th that's okay. It doesn't, I don't take offense to it at all, my friend. You're totally entitled to have that opinion. I disagree with you, and I will continue to do what I do, and that's why we sit here, because you have a different opinion about what I do in the world, and that's okay. I, I'm, not a, I'm not fearful of it, and nor do I, am I angry at it, or do I feel in any way disrespected. I don't, because I actually value your opinion, and I value the fact that that's how you think about it, because what that does is it makes me think about it. So I'm going to think about so, it in a different way now. So I'll, I'll Doesn't necessarily we'll mean to I'm going to stop. Question, but restraining our impulses mm -hmm. is what keeps civilization together. We don't Maybe. always get to do what we want to do. That's true. So for You're example, right. I'd love to sleep 14 hours a day. <laughs> I'm hardwired for it. Sure, me too. But I got to get up yeah. seven out, six, seven hours. That's right. I'd love to eat chocolate cake every day and all that. Can't That's do right. that. That's right. And but so do you want to take chocolate cake off the table that no one can have it? Is that what you want to do? Well, I would definitely be open to trying to make America eat much healthier, but uh -huh. I don't think chocolate cake comes anywhere near to the sort of visceral, chemical blitzkrieg that is actually But that's enacted. your experience with it, but which is horrible. No, it's not. The data shows it's tens of millions of people. It, it, you talk to an average young man out there in an honest setting. That's true. They will say they are depressed or anxious. Or that they watch suicidal, it. Suicidal, but they're not, ha they, most, the number one feeling after watching pornography done by any psychological data is mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. Regret and shame. Mm -hmm. People but after why is that? Why do you think be, that Maybe because they shouldn't be doing it. But and they why? Know it because, but it, are because they being told that? Maybe deep in the human soul they know what they just saw. But I don't not feel that way. Their consumption. But I don't feel that way when I watch it. And many of my other friends and people yeah, that look, I know don't, I mean, don't feel that you, way. You, you, you got your own way of looking at the world. But that's the, what I'm saying. The so vast that's, majority of way of the vast majority of people, though, feel that kind of shame. The people and you know and the people you're around feel that way, which well, is the totally. Clinical data shows that. But, 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 and that's okay. That's what I'm saying. Not everyone feels that way about pornography. Not everyone thinks it should be taken out. What we need to do is come to a space to understand why is it doing it to these young men? It's true. Most they tried to do a study, and they couldn't even do the study because all the guys had already watched porn. So they couldn't even do a study yes. on, that's right. So I know that, I, I'm very understanding it, it, of that. It attacks why, the gray matter in your brain. But why is it so much that way toward, towards young men and men? Why do they feel this need to watch porn? And, and because it's accessible, is that, is and that why? And they're hardwired to try to look for visual stimulation. Visual stimulation. And it's accessible and also they haven't been taught that it's wrong. That it's wrong. So there because you go. Because it is wrong. On, well, I don't know if it's wrong Gentlemen. for. <laughs> you almost agreed that it was wrong. <laughs> right on, dude. <laughs> this, this gets into this. So, Charlie, in recent yes. months, you have popularized the phrase sexual anarchy. Yes. First, could you define that for the audience and then explain the impact it has on our society? Yeah, so I, turned the, I coined the phrase sexual anarchy, mm -hmm. um, and actually it's from my friend, Pastor David Engelhart. Yeah, look, it's, it's sexual activity without restraints. Mm -hmm. So the law as we know it, and that's a bad term, but let's say rules, mm -hmm. okay, is actually what keeps us free. 
And so you know alcoholics, mm -hmm. I know alcoholics, they're hardly free. Mm -hmm. They do whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it. They might be fun, to yeah. use your term, term, but they're hardly free. They become a victim to those vices and devices. Mm -hmm. The same, I would argue, is in the sexual realm. And I'm not trying to be a moralist by any means. Mm -hmm. I admitted you know, how this, this sort of nonsense damages mm -hmm. young people and damaged me. But I will say, though, on a very serious and real level, that if a society all of a sudden says we're not going to have virtuous or moral guardrails, mm -hmm. then we become more depressed, unhappier, mm -hmm. more anxious, more medicated, and more alcohol addicted. And mm -hmm. so that's, a, that's kind of a catch-all term for basically people saying, do whatever you want to do in the sexual domain. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'll go back. It, it robs the innocence of children, which you do have mm -hmm. a soft spot for. Mm -hmm based on your commentary, but more than anything else, I think it creates um, a society that decays from within, mm -hmm. one that cannot control its sexual impulses. Mm -hmm. You know, again, maybe I'm not really sure about that because I think we have a different experience. So my experience is totally different than your experience around pornography, and it's probably because I'm around it more, or the people that I am around have a healthy experience with it. So maybe we need to start talking about sex in a more healthy way, not pornography, but sex, so, because yeah, sex is natural. Sex well, is something people actually. It, it is natural, mm -hmm. but so it's an impulse, and sex should be saved for one person in marriage. But that's your own moral way of being. Not everyone feels that way. It doesn't matter how they feel. It's the ideal. It's true. But where does that come from? Where are your morals coming from? The laws of nature and nature is God. It's the so ideal. So who's God? Is that a Christian God? Is it, that a Jewish I God? I believe in the, is Christian, that, in the Christian okay, God. Okay, so yes. that's in the moral space of Christianity. Well, it's objectively true. I don't want to go too far in the spiritual domain, mm -hmm. but let's just kind of ask this question, which is, like, do you think in the ideal, mm -hmm. a monogamous, Mm -hmm. Heterosexual relationship uh -huh. is the ideal. No, I don't. What's ideal then? Whatever makes whatever kind of relationship is ideal. So, so that being said, I don't necessarily believe all heterosexual relationships are the be all, uh, end all. What about gay relationships? It's not about ideal. Two men? But I have a lot of great gay friends. It's not ideal. But it is ideal to me. And what about my relationship? I'm a biological woman who lives as a man who has an actual biological woman wife yeah, again, and a biological child. Respectfully, not ideal. But that's right. That's See what I mean? That's your idea. But my well, idea is not, different than yours. But I think you could look, and you know this deep down. You know it's true. Objectively, if a society does not have marriages that are between men and women and having children out of those marriages, mm -hmm. that society will unravel mm -hmm. and cease to exist. Well, I mean, again, that's not that's possible in your space, but I think looking outside of your space, there are so many different ways of being that don't necessarily but that make them right. in your eyes. In the eyes. I know, because the, so the, the you, eyes are you, your... Let me ask you a question. Is there such thing as absolute truth? Mm, not, um, that's a difficult question for me to answer because I'm not really sure yes that Yes or I, no? No. Do you believe that absolutely? Yes then you do believe in absolute truth. <laughs> so it's a trick question. <laughs> right on. No, but I don't believe in absolute truth. So you absolutely truth. believe there's no absolute truth? <laughs> so I think things, things, there's a nuance there, my friend. I think there's a nuance in everything. And I think there that we're missing be, that. But there's some I things think, that, so for example, you believe murder is wrong. You believe that. Of course, yeah. of course. Okay. Of course. And wait, wait, let's just look at murder. What, what if you murdered somebody because you were going to save your life. So you know, is it, that murder? It's killing, not murder. Okay, see, so there you go. Then, now you just change the difference. No, no, no. no, no. In murder is very. Murder is taking the life right. of an innocent. So the, for no so the good definition of murder reason. and the definition yeah, of killing, killing are different. Of right. course. Okay. So if someone tried to come in and tried to uh -huh. murder me, and I killed them, yes. that would be killing, not murder. Uh, out of murder would be there's someone in their house. I don't like them. I yeah. want to take them out. They yeah. never did anything. So to the, you. it's a different intention. So yes. But that's I not nuance. Believe. That's just separate. No, no, no. That's separate definitions. That's right. You don't believe. No, no. Of course not. Of course you don't believe in murder, right? Yeah. And you believe in telling the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever the truth is. Everyone's right. truth is different. Is it? I think so. So, I, I mean, do. like, can you make up your own, this, we, we are, we're talking about physics, right? Like, you can't okay. make up your own material truth. You can't be like, driving on the 405 laws of gravity are suspended. I would love <laughs> well, that. Right. Right? But my truth you around- You must be anchored to some absolute truth. Well, you have to be. Well, of course. Now, now, looking at it like that, when you explained it, I understand that. But at the same time, outside of that, my absolute truth around marriage, or that might be different than your absolute truth around marriage. No, no, it might be. But the question is, what is right? So why would there what be- What is right to me is not the same as what's right so, for yeah, you. So th yeah, that's the question, yeah. right? So Ted Kaczynski thought it was right to that's send- That's right. That's right. Right. to people. He sure did. And that was wrong, right? Well, in our eyes, yes, but not in his eyes. But he was wrong. In our eyes, yes, he was. Do you think in objective eyes, Ted Kaczynski was wrong? Yes. 
Okay, good. So th that's what I'm saying is that there is an objective yes. moral standard eventually. Yes. Eventually. Right? So, and what I'm saying is that in that objective moral standard yes. includes sexual relations. Yes. So again, but then sexual relations come to what you believe in as so, yeah, sex. Let me ask you a question though. Yeah. So like pedophilia, is it objectively wrong? So now we're going back to kids. No, that's important though, right. because now we're going that's back hotly to kids. debated. There's college professors that say there's oh, nothing no, wrong but with it. So, so let me just start, start with, yes, I do not believe in pedophilia. I believe and it's I'm an actual- I'm not accusing you of that. Not, I don't yeah. think you are. And that being said, I believe it's an illness. I believe it's an actual mental illness that needs to be understood. Right. Okay. I do not agree with it. Well, I don't I, think it should be understood. I think it should be incarcerated. I think you, but no, yeah. but I think we need to do studies and understand why are people doing this? Why is this actually happening? I have no desire to have sex with a child. And hopefully you don't either. Now that Trust being me, said, I, I have no desire, but I would really under, want to know why are these people this no, but, way? But the point is finally you admit, okay, that's wrong. It is wrong. Yes. Right. So there at some in point- my, in, my, in my eyes it's wrong. But like you just said, there are some people who believe it's not wrong. Right, but they are wrong is the point. In is that, our so, eyes they are wrong. No, but that's the point <laughs> is that eventually we're gonna have to get to objective truth and subjective truth. Yes. It doesn't matter yes. my eyes versus their eyes. Yes. It's it's existence, right? Yes. A is A regardless if you think it's B. But do you think you can get everyone on board with that? No way. But the humans will never get on board with everything being one thing. They will not do well, that. Well, great question. Is yeah. that it doesn't take everyone, right? And, and it, the majority. It, well, or, or, or a reasoned majority, yes. right? This is why the yes. American founding was so special. Yes. Is that they, all 13 colonies, yes. they believed in some very certain basic things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That man should be free, rights are granted by God, yep. separation of powers, consent to the governed. Yep. There might have been some lunatic weirdo in the hills that was like, I want to live under a king. That's right. It doesn't really matter, right? Yep. But when we, when we look at how we formulate laws and we ask morality, it really comes down to the question is what is good? Uh -huh. Right, what is good? So again, where you're coming from. I, I and, really and it's do not think... just the Bible, it's from the classics, it's uh -huh. from Aristotle, Plato, uh -huh. it's from uh -huh. the canon of the West, uh -huh. from Aquinas, from Augustine, uh -huh. from Bacon, from Newton, all of these amazing pioneers that built the West okay. articulated a central morality yes. that is in our books, it's in our movies, it's in our existence, which is that children are off limits. The ideal is one man, one woman marriage. The that we should try to protect the innocent. That courageous exploration is something we should right, try to do. Right, and that's their morals. No, and no, no, I, and, no. And it, that's, it's the morals. That's what I'm trying to no, get at. No, I don't agree so, with yeah, you. But, but it, they are. It isn't the morals. It's the morals of those specific people. Other but, people but those, have different morals. Right. So exactly. Right. So yeah. if you go back to the 800s of the Goths, they used to murder children. And they used to not think it was wrong. Okay. That is wrong. In our eyes, that's wrong. But to, in their eyes, it isn't wrong. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say is I agree with pedophilia. All those things no, are no, wrong. I know, but the point but, is that the but, overarching laws of the universe mm -hmm. don't change just because someone thinks But how are those incorrect. the overarching all laws of the universe when these are just human men making these laws up? So They're that, not just making them up. They are writing them and writing them down. Where are they getting them from? Because they're coming together, of the and they're coming world, together as men and having discourse dialogue, creates that. Study, that's right. So let, if you take a different group, prayer, that's right. Yes. But a, another group of people will have different ideas right, but, around but that. But even if they have different, the point is that you can look at that and say, "Huh, okay, Aztecs sacrificing children, wrong." I don't care if they thought it was right. I don't. Th I don't care if they thought that it yeah. was going to bring back sure. Teotihuacan or whatever. Sure. Wrong. Yes. Right. Right. Romans that used to, you know, rape boys. Mm -hmm. Wrong. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that we look at that, mm -hmm. regardless if you're from Japan or Russia, mm -hmm. and you have an overarching view of the universe. That's right. That says there is objective morality in their eyes. Yes, I agree with you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to wrap up with this last question: um, Is transgenderism a legitimate thing? Does it coincide with the natural law, or is it a social construct created over time? And if so, by whom and for what purpose? I'll let. So that's a great question, actually. So I'm, I'm, I, again, I can speak for myself, because myself, I do believe that I actually have something called gender dysphoria. And I do believe that I have been diagnosed by a professional person that says, now, let's say I wasn't diagnosed, I don't know, maybe I would have been able to live my life as a very butch woman, but I tried and I couldn't do it. That being said, I think transgenderism is a real thing. I think it is a mental disorder. I believe that people can be diagnosed with it and you can be me and move on with your life. I believe what's happening today is something different than what I see and what I believe in. So, you know, that's kind of where I stand. Yeah, I, I don't know about a real thing. I don't really know how to answer that part yeah. of it. I mean, I'll say I think you're actually a lot tougher than you give yourself credit for. I think that you could have got through it without having to. Maybe. 
but Pick I'm happy. yourself apart. But I'm happy. So isn't that really the bottom line is I'm a happy person. And I move through the world the way I wanted to move through the world. And, and you know, that's all I want anybody to see. I don't want to change your mind. If you're not into changing your mind, that's totally OK. All I want to do is walk away from this table saying, you know what, Buck? Cool. I respect what you do. That's it. I don't agree with it. I don't want so it. But I, I respect I don't it. respect pornographers. I'll be very honest. <laughs> right on. But that's OK, dude. I have, but I'm totally cool with that. You are a pleasant person. <laughs> so um, yeah, look, it is a social, I, I don't really, social construct, like, I mean, yeah. It, it, this transgender movement is is invoking massive damage on our society. It is. Society. I agree. I, I will agree with that. I don't believe what's happening is real. And I'm wondering, what are the underlying agenda here? Why is it... I get called transphobic. That is so insane in itself. That should say everything to the world right there. Because I don't agree with certain things in a community. That says to me it's not a community anymore. It's something like very cultish and very much if you speak outside, they're going to come after you. I will not, as a person who transitioned 29 years ago, who lives an amazing life, who moved forward in the world, sit down and watch what's happening to the community I helped to build. So that's where I stand. I believe it's real. What was the second part of the question? It was, who is um, creating this and for what purpose? <laughs> yeah, I think it's the pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, I and, do too. I, I mean, do too. Well, I don't want to get into that rabbit hole, but I think yeah, it's... It is. Uh, I think there's a, a supernatural component to this, but that's, <laughs> that's a separate issue for another yeah, time. Yeah, that's right. So I'll give you each about a minute for final thoughts, and then we'll close. You first. Oh, thank you. So um, my final thoughts were um, that I, I understand why people have a hard time with pornography. I always have, and I always will. I do believe what I do still is, is um, important work in, in my field. That being said, I also believe that people need to start understanding transgender it, it is something that is a very small amount of people in the world. It's not what you see. And I think on some level that you we need to have the discussion around what's happening in this and why there's this push of agenda to transition people at such a fast rate. Transsexualism is real. It's here. I have actual proof of it. But I do believe that we need to have a bigger conversation around it. Um, appreciated you being here. It was lively and spirited. You were more nuanced towards this. I want to give you credit for that. <laughs> um, definitely uh, don't agree on the pornography stuff. And uh, I think the production of it's reprehensible. However, um, we've, we've been through that fine. Um, I'll just close with this. Like, look, there's the laws of nature, mm -hmm. and we can't put them in suspense just because we want to. You admit that. You mm -hmm. admit yeah. I'm, I'm a male yeah. that is, you know, I don't want to say offend you, but masquerading as a female or putting That's on right. a costume no, or whatever yeah. uh, as a male. And um, I think it's really important that we stay anchored in things that are good and true and beautiful uh -huh. and trying to go on the journey of the exploration of the people that have gone into the fields and gone into the oceans of trying to figure out what that actually means. Yeah. The Western canon is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about protection of the innocent, you know, the courageous exploration, the journey of the unknown. Um, and there are things in this world that are objectively true. Uh, and we must dive into those, such as um, sex being protected mm -hmm. in a private domain, such as having children to be able to develop and to pursue virtue, hopefully being, it, being able to develop a society around those things. But um, I will give you credit. Um, your, your willingness to have this dialogue uh, is something that deserves to be commended. Thank you. Um, despite our very different views on a lot of different things. <laughs> but, but that's how things change, my friend. So I really appreciate you bringing yeah. me on. It means a lot to me that you're willing to have the conversation. Yeah. Dialogue is through reason. That's what the Greek means in it. Buck Angel, thank you very much for thank joining you. us. And Charlie Kirk, we'll see you next debate night. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, my friend. That was awesome. Thank, thank you. you.